so when we talk about closure like uh, this is kind of another second uh, most important question which we get normally ask in the interview so once the hosting is done everyone will normally ask like what is closure what are the benefits of closure what default uh, behavior is there in javascript which supports the closure correct so this kind of question we normally get asked so let's see a normal definition first so closure is very easy but if you try to explain the definition from the inter, uh, let's say internet uh, using that lexical scope and everything so you might end up confusing yourself also and even though you know it you might not be explaining it properly to the interviewer again he can cross question you on that right so just understand the basic concept like what is actually closure then you can create your own sentence don't use the sentence which is already you will find it in the google correct so let's say we have a function let's say function name is outer now in this outer function let's say we have create we are creating a variable let's say course is equal to js preparation so now in this outer function i have created a variable in that variable i have stored some value now inside this function we can have another function okay so let's say function inner now this function is inside this function okay so now what are the variables we create in this function right first of all like uh here comes the word scope like what is the meaning of scope like how or where we have to get the scope okay so scope is in up uh, by let's say in up to which you can access particular variable or function means where you are where whenever wherever you have created a variable that variable up till where we can access that that is nothing but the scope like where uh, by, what is the limit or uh, in which functions or in which outside or in the global or in the honor function or in the another function we can access that variable so that nothing but a scope like where we can access that variable that is nothing but the scope of that variable now so when we talk about closure so first like we are whenever explaining is whenever you are explaining it you need to explain it properly assuming like you are creating a function which is let's say outer you can create your own name also and inside that function again we have some function so whatever the variable we create in the outer function these all the variables will have access inside the inner function also so from inner function we can access all the variable declared inside the outer function okay so here console dot log and we can access course and let's try to execute this also will it ex uh, will it print this now will it print No, sir. Why? Inner function is not right? called. Because we haven't executed this function. Okay. Now let's save. Let me just open the console. So here you can see JS preparation. We have got it. So from inner function, we are able to access the variable which is present in the outer scope of this function. Now, when we talk about the outer scope, so inner function have an access to the outer scope outer scope as in this function is present inside this outer function so uh, outer scope means whatever the variable we declared inside this this is nothing but the outer scope for the inner function now in the global also i'm creating a variable so let's say where course duration seven days right so what we have did in a global space we have created a variable so we all know like if we create any variable in the global scope doesn't matter where you are either you are a function inside a function inside a function you can access that variable but how it is accessing because see now outer function this variable is in the outer scope of this function outer okay so now outer function will have access to this just like that whatever whatever the variables and the scope this outer function as again inner function can have access of that outer scope right so this variable we can access over here also and 
inside inner function as well. It chain can be going inside, let's say outer, inner, inner one, inner two, anything. Okay. Just give me a moment. Okay. Right. So just like this, again, we can have an inner function also inside this function also. Let's say we create another function inner two. And inside this also, we can access all the variable, this global variable also variable, which we have declared in the outer function as well. And let's say if we have one more variable where inner well value is equal to, let's say ABC. Now this inner two will have access of this inner function. And this inner two will have access of this also. So whatever you inside inside you create the function, it will have the scope of from global. Okay. So this is the chain, like how we get the access. Let's try to print everything. We will try to print the inner value over here and this inner function also we need to call it. So here you can see ABC we have got. So this is nothing but a closure. By using closure, we get the access of outer scope. When you are explaining, you just have to explain it uh, by explaining a function. Let's say we have an outer function. There are some variables which we have declared into outer function. And inside this function, inside this outer function, again, we have, uh, we have uh, another function inner. So in the inner function, we get an access of outer function. Okay. So whatever the variable we have created in the outer function, we will have access in the inner function as well. This is deep, uh, means very simple and the plain definition of closure. Now in Angular, we cannot create like this. In React, we can create like this, correct? But st still like in React, if you have worked on a project like that, then you might have seen code like that. Inside a function, you might have a function. But in a normal way, if you are if you are in the preparation mode, you won't find that kind of code also. But it's a JavaScript concept. So we should be aware about it just for the interview purpose, okay? Is it clear everyone now? Anyone has any question? No. Okay. Now, what I wanted to explain. Yeah. So once we explain the definition, now normally interviewer will ask you, is there any default uh, thing provided in JavaScript, which by default support hosting? Can anyone tell me like, is there anything? in JavaScript, which support hosting, oh, sorry, closure, anyone? Is there any functionality which is provided by JavaScript by default, which supports the closure? Set time. Yeah, so set timeout, set interval, these are nothing but functions only now, but inside that function also, we can access the variable which is in the outer scope. Mm -hmm. so let me just comment it out. Let's say function print name. Let's say inside this function, we have created a variable name. And inside this, we have set timeout. So set timeout is nothing but a function, correct? Either you write the arrow function or you write the normal function. Correct. It's a function. So now inside this function, we can ac access the value which is present in the outer scope. So console.log name we can access. And let's execute this function. So after one second, it will print the AA. So this is the default example what we should inform when if someone asks you like, is there any default functionality provided in JavaScript, which supports the closure? This is like, these are the function we have created, but this is existing now. So that's what they are looking for. Like the definition, everyone will prepare, right? But do you know something else uh, apart from the definition? So that's what they are looking for. So that's why this question will be there. Clear everyone? Just like set timeout, set interval also. But there in set interval also, we can have an access to the outer scope variable. Clear, everyone? So 
that's the basic thing okay now just like yesterday we have seen how it uh, how like memory allocation was there now just like that let's try to see how this actually works okay let's comment it out now like what is actually closure okay now the definition and the what is the normal way normal understanding we have seen but what it actually works how it actually works behind the scene okay so now here also i'm adding a debugger inside every function i will add a debugger so we will get to see the scope or the closure of it now see again we have to go over here so now here you can see this local you can observe currently where i am inside the outer function or so here what you can get what is the closure you are getting this is nothing but the closure means the what access like what are the variables or the object you have the access so in this outer function outer function what will be the outer scope of this outer function global scope because this function is in the global scope right so whatever there is in the global scope that will be a closure of this function so here you can see this we have got this nothing but global then in the outer function wait where we are outer no from where this force is coming okay sorry here let's me just continue so now here let's continue first okay so now here you can see we have got the closure so the term whatever we were telling like closure closure we get the access of the outer scope so here you can see currently we are in the inner function so inner function will have a closure of outer function so here you can see closure now if you expand that whatever the variable and the function you create over here you will have an access of that so this is the closure currently we are in the inner so the closure of inner will be outer so here you can see outer is there let's continue now we are in the inner too so now here we will have two closures means by default three closure is there global is also there so first closure is like our, our inner one in inner function because inner inner two currently we are in the inner two so first it will have two closure first this inner function and then outer function so here you can see we have two closures and obviously global will be there so this is how how like closure will work in the background so if you understand this if you remember this image so you will be you will be properly explaining like what is the actual closure so this is the scope whatever the uh, variable you have declared into the outer scope that you can have access because that closure will have that function will have a closure of that function outer fo function so this is how we see the closure clear everyone just like we have seen the memory declaration just like that we get to see the closure also in scope clear all okay so let's see some words we have so in hosting you will be uh, you will be able to see so many different different uh, what do we say uh, javascript coding snippet but in closure we have very limited because what uh, they can ask now a function inside a function then variable they will create and uh, they will try to access it that's it so you won't find so many example related to closure but in case of hosting you will find it because there are so many scenarios uh, we can create which implement the hosting features right but in closure we have limited so let's see few so again this is very basic one only what we have seen this is also okay so here what we have to mean we have created a top function inside that we have created very yeah this is a new thing let's copy this now whatever we have seen over here now the closure now same thing we will see in a proper example let me just comment it out this okay so now see this example what we have did over here we have created a normal function inside this function we have created a variable xxx inside this xxx we have stored 999 now inside this top function we have one inner function and this inner function we are trying to access the value of this xxx 
So if we know the uh, normal behavior of closure, so obviously this function will have an access of outer scope, means whatever the variable we declared inside the top function, we will access it, right? But here you can see it has written the inner. This inner function we didn't execute. It has written the function. Means if we execute this function, this function will, will return the inner function, okay? And then see, we are we have created another variable and this uh, variable we have stored whatever this function is returning and then we are trying to execute this so when this a we will execute this function is actually going to execute right so we will have an access of this so let's see i will add a debugger over here also and over here also What is speaking top is already where is top identified top has already been declared we have declared it only once no anyone getting why we are getting this error it's showing line number 11 where is line number 11 Nothing is there. Eleven. One script we are getting. Identifier top has already been declared. Are we using letter const? No. Let's try to rename parent. And this also parent. Hmm. Might be name because in my cache memory top function might be there. Now. So see, currently we are in the parent function because this is on line number 43, we have executed this function. Now this function is going to return a function, okay? And that we are storing into this variable. Obviously in this variable, we will get a function. So obviously we can execute it. So now continue. Now here you can see, we go, uh, currently we are in the inner function. So this inner function will hold the closure of out parent function also so here you can see we got the 999 let me just let's add a debugger at line number 53 continue so see currently we are at line number 43 okay so line this function will execute it will return the function so now in this a what we have stored means whatever that parent function has written we have stored everything because this parent function what it is returning it's returning a function so while returning the function, it is actually returning the function with its closure also. So that's why when we are trying to run this function, it is still able to access the triple X because when we return the function, inner function, it has its closure also. So now if we continue, if this line execute 44, it will go over here and this will have a closure of this. So it doesn't matter if you stored a function inside a variable and then you execute after some time. Still, whatever the closure means scope it has, it will store in that function. Got it? Whatever we have seen pre in previous example, it is the same. Just from this function, we have written the function. So here interviewer will try to confuse you. Look, no, we are returning a function. So it will create a new execution context or something. But while wherever we have created this function, this function will have its closure. Doesn't matter where if you are storing it somewhere else or not storing, or if you are executing this function here only, this function will have a closure of parent. Okay. Understood? So this is just to trick you because it is just the same. Doesn't matter if you are executing this function over here or you are storing this function into another variable and you are then executing it. It will still have the scope of the parent variable, parent function. Understood? Let's check next one. This is an again simple which we have seen. Set timeout also we have seen. This is actually not related to what do we say closure. This is with variable where and this is with variable let. It's actually an example of late and for late and var. 
layer but let's see this so see what we are trying to do over here we have a normal function inside that function we have a for loop and for loop we have uh, for loop variable uh, for loop instance we have created with where okay initialize from 0 up to 5 it will be iterate and index plus plus now here at console.log for first console is inside my for loop okay here index is printed now whatever the value current value index will have it will print over here then we have set timeout okay in set timeout after 1000 seconds, whatever the value index is there, we are multiplying that. So after a certain amount of time, it will execute. And inside that also, we are trying to access the index. So one index we are accessing in the for loop and another index we are accessing in the set timeout, right? So let me just add it, set timeout. So let's see. So here you can see this for loop, this console line, what you have, what it has printed zero, one, two, three. Obviously this is very simple index, whatever the current value of the index it is there, it will print. But in set timeout, we have got five, five times set timeout got printed, but it has printed the same value, five only. Can anyone tell me why it has printed? Here we have got the value, uh, means whatever the iterating value we have got, right? But here, after five sec, whatever the uh, uh, set timeout it has executed after some time, it has printed five only. Can anyone tell me why it has printed five or why it has not printed one, two, three, four, five, just like we have got the output from this line? Anyone? Here, here uh, uh, it has a where, where is a block, uh, block scope, no? Sorry, functional scope, that's why it is printing. Whenever see. we are accessing inside, yeah. so it is okay. holding the parent one. Yeah. So when we talk about where and let, so where is a function or global scope? Okay. Remember, where is a function or global scope? Means if you declare the variable where inside a function, it will have the function scope. If you create the variable inside a global, it will have a global scope. A global scope. Correct. Now. This for loop is there inside a function. So, and this set timeout is also inside the function only. So, this for loop will iterate and the whatever the latest value it have. When this set timeout will execute now, this index will refer to this where. So, let's say in the memory, what it will create index will only in uh, one memory will it will create index. And after every uh, one after every for loop iteration, it will update the latest value. Correct. So we we have a one memory allocation only for this index variable. Inside that only one value, whatever the updated value is there after the for loop, that will be there. After that time, set timeout will execute. Now in set timeout, we are trying to access the value of index, but index is declared with where. So only one instance is there in the memory. So that's why it will print five up till that time. Five times it will set timeout will be five execution object will be created of this set timeout. And after a particular that time, five times this set timeout will execute. But in all the five times, it will refer to the index memory location only, whatever the value it has, the last value in the for loop, which is incremented. That value we will get to see over here. Understood? Or not? Let's try to, instead of where, I'm making it late now. Okay? So just remember 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is there. And in set timeout, we have got 5 only. 5 times set timeout got printed, but just it was the same value. That's why here you can see 5. Okay. Now if let's save. Now here you can see we have got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This was same in case of where and late also. But in case of late, we have got a different value. Now, can you and explain me like why we have got the different value in set timeout and in case of where we have got the five only, but here we have got the whatever the value we have passed inside that for loop, that separate value we have got it over here. Here, let will create a 
for each iteration it will create new scope that's for right so let is a block scope variable now here you can see this is a function and in this function we are passing the index value so inside this this is a let variable so for every function for this every function whenever we are executing it inside this block scope we are trying to access the index so for every block scope it will remember the value we are passing it while executing this set timeout so in the memory for every set timeout object it will have one then two then three four five what at most time we are using the for loop now whatever the value index has that will be stored inside this block scope means because let will have a block scope so whenever we are passing the value to this uh, block scope every time it will remember the value it got it's no means in case of let this set timeout will have a five instances so it will have five different memory location and in five different memory location, you will have different, different values, whatever the value we have passed while executing this line of code. Got it. So this is actually an example. It's a closure also, but it's a more uh, an example of where and the lit. So whenever you explain the difference between where and lit now, so this is the right example, how you can explain the difference between where and lit. Understood? Okay, now here is a tricky one. I want to create for loop with where only, but in set timeout, I want to pass the, just like the output we have got with let now, just like that output I need over here. Now, can anyone tell me like how you can do that? My for loop will be with where only, okay? But in set timeout, I want the updated means one, two, three value, different, different values only, not the last value. First of all, you got my question or not? See, in case of where, what what happens? In set timeout, we will get five, but I don't want five. I don't want the last updated value of the index. I want the one, two, three, four, five like that. How can we do that? Anyone? So see, here we have a catch. Here we are going to use the closure concept. Okay. So what I will create inside this for loop, I will create a function. Okay. And this set timeout, I will move inside this function. Sorry. Print val. And this index, I will pass it as a, here. I will have a parameter. Let's say serial number something and this serial number i will print it over here and over here also let me just format okay and this function i will execute over here and i will pass what i will pass over here index, I, index only now so index i will pass it over here okay so see what we have done, we have created a function and the set timeout, we have moved our set timeout into this function. And we are calling this function over here and every time in the for loop, uh, for loop will execute, we are passing a parameter to this function. Okay, now let's save and check. Hmm. So see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, just like the output we used to get with late, we have got it. Still, we have declared with where only. So now tell me what is this? How we have achieved this? What happens if we have put that set timeout inside a function? Anyone? No, right? Because see, this is a function inside a function. Doesn't matter. You are you have created a function inside a for loop. But still this function inside is this still this function is inside the y function only. Na? So when the uh, execution context of this function will be created, this will have a closure of this outer function. And at that time, index value will be something, na? right? So whenever we are creating a closure of this, whatever the value index is had, index has at that particular time, particular in the for loop instance, that value, that value will have in the closure. 
okay so that's why when whenever this function whenever like we are passing the value this value we are passing it over here and this value will have an access to the outer scope and every time we are creating a new so for this function we will have five instances of this function with every five instances we are passing a parameter right so it's not actually referring to the single memory location of the index variable it is using whatever the variable it has got so in the in this execution context it will have a separate copy of this serial number whatever the value we are passing it over here so it will have a separate copy of this serial number for this function understood so this is a kind of an advanced example for closure first they will ask you the normal for loop with where then let and if you answer both of them correctly then they will try to check you with this okay clear everyone yes sir. okay so again i told you like uh, with closure we don't have much but these are the normal things we have this is what let's check this also self invoking function so we have a variable let count is equal is equal to zero then we have a self executing function if count is equal to is equal to zero we are assigning again we have created a let uh, new variable with let count is equal to it and here we are printing it and here also we are printing it okay so can anyone tell me like what will be the output and why what so here you can see one is there let me just explain so here you can see in the first console this console is okay this console line number 48 we have got one so again the coming back to where and let so we have created this count variable with let so this count will have a scope up till this okay so this count variable this count is not this because we have created one more variable so this variable we have uh, we have declared it with uh, constant sorry let and let will have let have a block scope right so this is the block scope okay so this count is nothing but this but this count is inside the uh, this count is uh, like inside a function so it will be a global scope so this variable which we have created in the global scope we are going to access it over here so by default it is zero once we do it let it let uh, it looks like we are in uh, what we can say uh, reinitializing the value of the variable which we have created in the global but no it's a new copy which is having access to this block scope only understood can you make that as well? sorry uh, can you try to change that there oh. with where now hmm. still this is different right now see here we have created this is a global variable correct now this is a function normal function right doesn't matter if it is a self-invocating function or a normal function this is a function now yesterday what we have seen if we have same variable in the global and in the local also so what happens now here this count this count obviously uh, this count is nothing but this okay and let's add a debugger hosting also we will get to see so see currently this is undefined why it is undefined now because because yeah. inside this function we have this variable no, again created so it is not considering this because with same name we have a variable declared inside this function so it will consider this and this line is not executed it that's why we have an un undefined value over it so it won't go inside and here also we will get the undefined only got it so this is actually a closure example if we create it with the where understood right so just like this what we are discussing just like that in the interview also they will try to now uh, they will try to ask you only now change it to late and change it to where and they will again ask you the output 
okay so just try to stick the basic if we have a variable which is there in the global and if we have the same variable again declared okay so that copy is different and the global one we are not using it because in this function we have already created a variable which is count so it won't consider this count this is global only this is everywhere we are using understood okay so that's it with closure i didn't had so many programming question because there is very limited scenario but in hosting we had so many so tomorrow we will see the prototype what is prototype what we have to explain it comes to when it comes to prototype what is prototypical inheritance just two things are there what is prototype and prototypical inheritance okay that we will see tomorrow anyone has any question okay thanks all thanks for joining